Hey everyone, on today's episode of Pinchy House Garage, we're going to work on our 2014 JSW Jetta Sport Wagon and we're going to show you how to upgrade the brakes. Going from stock and going to power stop, full slotted and drilled with new uh, performance pads. So let's get to work because as always, this is 2020 and at Pinchy House Garage, we're going to brake, fix, and repeat. So on our Kerma TDI tuned uh, Jetta Sport Wagon, we need we need a better braking power, and we're going to show you how to do this. Going from the stock rotor to actual performance power stop, and we actually got some performance pads from Power Stop themselves as well. We actually got an entire kit. Believe it or not, we got the entire kit from AutoZone. Uh, they actually carry Power Stop products. They drop ship items to you, uh, to them, and deliver them. So you don't have to pay for that shipping fee. Makes it easy and convenient. So, first things first, get your car jacked up in the air, and your jack stands actually have to go on the control arm right here down below. You'll see that we're using this control arm right there. Uh, that's the actual mount that we're going to be using to um, to hold your jack stands in place as you do this job. Uh, that is the strongest place besides the pinch welds. Uh, but you have to use a jack, obviously, to uh, to mount your uh, to put your to lift your car up. So that's the next best spot uh, for putting the jack stand. Once you get your uh, wheels off, the next thing you're going to need is a tool. Your tools. And it's actually not very many. You're going to need a flathead to remove this guy right here, the brake line, and then down below we need a seven millimeter Allen for this part for the caliper uh, carrier, and then. Back over here is a 21 millimeter. You guys can see that 21 millimeter socket, and then you're gonna need another Torx for this guy right here. And I'll get you the exact size for that one. Um, and that's pretty much it. All you need to take apart the uh, caliper and brakes off this car. Um, and then we'll show you what to do next. All right. Now your tools. Again, we're gonna break down the tools one more time. Breaker bar, half inch with an extension, half inch ratchet. Five head screwdriver. We got a T30, seven millimeter Allen, 21 millimeter socket, three eighths ratchet, C clamp, and a, and a little three pound sledge. You need that to whack the uh, rotor off the, the car. This is everything you need to do the front brakes on, okay guys? These are for the front brakes. We'll show you what tools you'll need for the rear brakes when we get to that point. So let's get to work. So the next step of this process, is getting this guy off and that's pretty easy kind of just peel that up with your flathead you're gonna kind of wiggle and it's gonna be loose uh, the caliper's already been removed so we're gonna slide the caliper actually turn it up we're gonna get you out of this little spot so you guys can see what I mean get you a little bit further back there we go And we're gonna grab this caliper, slide that out. So this gives us the uh, space we need. You're gonna pull that guy up. And caliper's out, up and out of the way. Kinda keep it square on there so it doesn't fall on you. The next one is your Torx. Which we're gonna need to remove this guy right here. Which doesn't go on very tight. It's just a, it's a it's what we call a set screw. Um, all it does is set the caliper in place. I mean the rotor in place for us. And then with a hammer, turn your volume down, guys. It's gonna get loud with your hammer. Give it a good whack. Okay. 
some cars are not as loud. Some, I mean, it's not as easy. I mean, not as hard. Some cars, you just take that screw off and it just falls off. So, again, sorry about the noise, but that's what's going to happen. Next step uh, for your front calipers is you need to remove the guide bolts off of here on the actual caliper. There you go. And there's these two bolts right on the back that we were messing around with. Um, right now is actually a good time. You can actually remove the back pad. This guy. We don't need them anymore. Um, depending on how you feel, if you guys want to, use your C-clamp and find a good spot for that and you can compress your uh, you can start compressing actually the um, the pad in you gotta do that actually uh, before you take the pad out before you take the, the back one the front one's fine um, because you need to push the piston all the way in So when you put your new pads in, since they're going to be a lot thicker, they'll fit. You're not struggling to install your uh, your pads and rotors. Next step is you can go go about this two ways. Right now, you can take this spring off if you want to, but we don't need to at the moment because this side doesn't have a wire um, the brake pads there are two different styles um, it has one has a wear sensor the other one doesn't this one that doesn't have a wear sensor you don't need to remove the spring or actually the caliper carrier itself this is actually one thing I forgot to mention on the driver's side it actually has the wire um, so you have to take off the carrier completely off uh, to install it um, the reason for it because you have to feed the wire um, through here to this corner if not you won't you'll damage it and you'll have problems with the wear sensor your brake sensor on your car so remember that folks um, for the driver's side you are going to need to take off the carrier which is this guy uh, this is the caliper and remove everything else uh, in this on the passenger side in this scenario we don't have to do that um, we just pretty much need to clean it all up and then install the pads so we're here at this part where we got to install the new rotor and to do so, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there is a mounting screw right here for it. So that's pretty much where you're gonna line it up because there's only one mounting screw hole on here. your ratchet and put this on snug not too tight because you can break them these screws aren't meant to be on super tight it's just a set screw it's all its goal is to hold the rotor in place as you do your job that is its only purpose in this uh, in this uh, job here so the next thing is that we gotta get these pads installed we already got the rotors on there uh, What's really nice, uh, Power Stop actually labels each rotor for what side. So this is the front passenger side. So we got those there. And um, let's get to going on the next portion of this. So the next part of this job, you're going to need some brake cleaner. And all it's for is to clean off the, uh, the residual oil that they put on here for preventing the uh, rotors to uh, rust while they're being shipped. I spray some on a rag and just rub 
that side and the other side of the rotor. These are zinc coated, so technically we don't need to do this, but any, if you don't buy power shop rotors, if you buy different types of rotors, you have to do it. Uh, when you take them out of the package, if you touch them, they have an oily surface. That is just what you need to do. If these brakes were actually more uh, on the dirtier side, I start cleaning everything inside here, but these actually, the rotors are actually really, I mean the calipers are in really, really good shape. So I'm not gonna invest in dumping a bunch of brake cleaner on here, maybe a little bit here and there, but um, it's, there's not much to worry about on this caliper. I'm impressive at how, even, uh, the car didn't have a lot of miles on it, only had 40,000, so there wasn't a lot of uh, stuff that I needed to worry about on here. Um, but if your car, you're doing a brake job after 50,000, 100,000 miles, yeah, I'd get I get a bucket and just start soaking this stuff with brake cleaner because you'll have stuff super caked on on there. Uh, that'd be a smart thing to do. This car again has it's fairly new and been fairly well properly serviced, so I'm not overly concerned for a brake dust buildup on this setup right now. So your next step is installing your brake pads. You get two pads. Two are actually uh, they're identical if you look at them up front, but if you turn the pads around. They're actually different. There's a spring on one side, or a spring clamp on the form, and this one has nothing. So this is actually the outer pad, this is the inner pad, or I call it back and front pad. Uh, the back one is actually the first one you need to install. After you push your piston all the way in, this guy is a pain, I'm telling you this right now, to install. And the way that I got it to go on, on this car, uh, I actually had to use my ratchet to pry it in. I'm going to use my wood uh, hammer here uh, because the springs are really spread apart, so they're a pain in the boot to install. All right, so. We had to actually take off the spring. I forgot that the retaining spring right here holds the pads height. So if you don't do that, it won't actually give you enough pressure to pull the pop, pop in the pad. But once you do that, pad should fit in here. Now this is going to be a snug. Oh, not that was going to be a snug fit. Never mind. So get that on there. Line up your rotor. that first bolt Get your 21 millimeter and your ratchet. Get rid of that ready to tighten down. Now I like to do everything by hand um, and get that bolt as far down as I can by hand. Oops. And then actually start using my ratchet. Uh, look up your torque specs. If you don't, I like to go pretty much as hard as I can, and that's it. The caliper bolts go on super tight. You're going to tighten down your, uh, your guide bolts here. With your seven millimeter, if you've broken those loose. Put your new caps on, 
if you replace the uh, the grommets on them. And then that you that right there is your. Uh, oh, we're not done yet. We got to put on our little C clamp here or clamp. That's what we use the hammer for. Just to pound it down. Your uh, ABS sensor wire right here. The last thing is your spring clip. Uh, this is the one. This is the one you're gonna hate the most out of all of them, out of this whole job. Um, and you'll see here. Oh, this way. And then you gotta put that in here, and then bend it with your finger. Just like that. And tap in, tap that sucker in. And that should be pretty much your front brake job. Again, if you wanted to clean it, go ahead. Brake cleaner will not hurt the pads. Uh, what will hurt it is any type of grease. Uh, definitely will damage your pads. So don't be throwing some grease on that. Um, usually, if you had uh, brake pads with shims, then you would grease up the shims only. Uh, but this setup does not require it, so I'm not going to do it on this car. Uh, typically, you grease up the insides here. Uh, these calipers work slightly different than others. Um, so, it's not really crazy. But that is your front uh, brake job. On the driver's side, remember that one wire that has to be fed through the back of the caliper um, as you put on that wire, the, the wear sensor is what we call it, okay? All right, now let's get on and put our wheels on and it's gonna work on the back brakes now. All right, so we're back. And now to show you what's next, um, I already took off the rear just so you, sh you, guys, you guys can see what's going on. Uh, you need a different set of tools, not many different ones, but you need a, uh, what is this number? A 14 triple square, a 13 millimeter wrench, and that same T30, I believe, for the uh, set screw on the back. Um, so the rear caliper uh, is held together by the brake line and the handbrake cable. So you guys got to like not mess with that very much. Just let it chill for a little bit there. It's kind of hard to adjust it, unfortunately. Um, but you are going to need to break loose first the two 13 millimeters on the carrier. And then the, uh, the triple squares on the back, take them off. But first remove the, uh, the, the 13 mils on the carrier first. Uh, that will get you your brake pads off and the rotor off. And then the caliper can come off at the same time. Uh, what you need to go do is go get a tool at AutoZone or your local parts place to rent. And you're going to need the uh, caliper tool that actually goes on here to twist these. Because these are not um, piston type. These are actually uh, screw type uh, pistons. So they're kind of like a ratchet uh, piston type. So every time you hit pull the brake, it goes and clicks and locks. Um, to keep, make sure there's always constant pressure on this when you lock it, when you put the handbrake on. If not, your car would always roll down a hill. So we're gonna go on our way right now to AutoZone, go pick up the uh, tool, and then I'll be right back and I'll show you how to take everything, uh, put it all back together, and we're gonna do the other side one more time as a full breakdown, all right? So we're back and we went to go rent the tool uh, at AutoZone, which is this guy right here. Uh, this is the, called a you know a caliper tool set, and all this does is just twist the piston for you, and it, again it ratchets it back in place and pushes all the way down. Um, so we're gonna install new shims and new boots for this. So first we're gonna do the boots, um, which are really really simple. There's no specific side for the boot; they're all identical. Um, but there is a direction that they have to go. There's a notch and then no notch. That one goes up to here. Kind of like squeeze it in there. And then they give you a little grease packet here.
And what you're going to do is pour a little bit of that grease on here. Not too much. You don't want to slather it on here. Just get enough on there to lubricate it. And then you're going to push it in just like that. And make sure the bottom piece kind of goes in just like that. See that nice? It's a nice slide. See the old ones are kind of sliding back slower. So I'm going to undo this old work. Looks like this has been replaced. This one actually has a lot of grease in it, so I'm not going to actually put um, new grease in that one. Just a new boot. Let's say, give it a try. Make sure everything does what it's supposed to do. Nice and snug. So that's done. Now we're going to do the shims. There's four shims per side, um, per side of the brake. So remember how that one comes off? Because uh, there are specific shims per side. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm pulling all the ones for one side. There we go. There are left and right shims, so... Now what shims do, they allow for proper alignment of the... Uh, of the brake pad, and it also drops the amount of noise that you create when braking. Only if I can get that sucker in there. There we go. And then pull the other side out. Now, some shims are, some cars have shims that are very universal. The shims go on one way and the other ones go the other way. So um, you'll know when you get them. So once we got the shims in, we put the pads in place, then we tightened down the 13 and the uh, triple square on the back, nice and snug. And then here we go. We got the rear brakes on. Now I'm gonna show you guys again during the whole removal one more time so you guys can see it on the, on the passenger side. And then um, that's it, we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna do uh, some uh, testing after the fact because we want to make sure the brakes are doing their job. So we're going to take apart again the uh, these guys really quick. So going down. Use your uh, vice grip to hold down the little square that sits in the back of the uh, caliper guide bolts. Because that little square will spin and you're never going to get this bolt off. Now the sun is We've got about a half an hour, 40 minutes, so we're trying to make the most of this. So I'll show you what to do next when I get to that point. So we're back. All right, so we took off those two bolts on the back to hold the caliper, the whole entire carrier. Now 
we're over here again use your vice grips to hold this little square right there right there use your 13 take this sucker off these have a lot of thread locker on them so you're not going to be able to pull these out by hand pretty much just you'll start feeling it eventually should get loose enough that you'll be able to take it off kind of have to do the other side it's kind of funky all right so there we go now the carrier or not the carrier this is actually the actual caliper this is what we call a carrier. Um, we're gonna swap out this stuff really quick. Let me show you down here. So take these off. So again, pull these guys out. They're not side specific, so don't worry about them. They're weird. If you do want to worry about the side, then you can just put them in the way you took them off. Let me go grab the other stuff we need. Be right back. All right, so I'm gonna replace the shims really quick. Remember, there's only four per side. So remember which two you took off. They are specific to the side or direction. I mean, so remember that. Uh, always remember that the on these, the little tab that sticks out is going to be on the outside of the actual carrier. careful because they have sharp edges and they do hurt so if you got gloves wear them if you can do them raw like me go for it by all means it's your choice <laughs> Same process. New shims, uh, when installed, they drop the amount of noise they make when the car is braking so they have a benefit versus them be all rusty and cruddy like these so now we're going to put in the new rubber boots remember there's two sides of the boot there's a flat side and kind of like a caved in one the caved in side or the one with the little divot goes into the carrier the other side goes into the actual guide here oh wait didn't remove the old one the reason why you replace these because they do go the, the the rubber does get starts to get uh, wear or rot is what we call it um, so it's just a smart thing to get a kit that comes with everything you need to do the job right if you got some of that grease left put some on there and slap those bad boys in I'm gonna go grab that grease be right back The grease goes on the actual guide bolt 
we're good. I'm gonna slap some on there. Do it on both of them. Doesn't matter if there's some on there already. Fresh grease is always beneficial. And slide the bolt in. Make sure it seats all the way down. And flat. Just like that. Okay. Now, reverse install everything with your new pads. Now we got carbon fiber ceramic pads from PowerStop. These guys, I will list the part numbers in the description once we get this all done. But reverse install everything and then we'll show you what to do next. So we got the carrier back onto the caliper and now we're gonna slap in a pad. So you always want to do the back one first. They're such a pain because they have to go in almost pretty much perfect. If they don't, they won't slide in all the way. And that's what's the nuisance about brake pads. So that's this side. And now we got to do the other side. And this is where my headache comes in. <laughs> that side is easy. For some reason, the all right, everyone. Sorry for that uh, abrupt or quick ending to the video, but my memory card got full, and I ran out of battery. Insane coincidence, but we're gonna explain to you what happens at the end. So. You're gonna tighten down all your hardware, all your bolts, and get your wheels on. And we're gonna explain to you the break-in procedure for these PowerStop brake pads and rotors. They are a carbon fiber ceramic composite, so there is a very specific uh, process to uh, use these rotors, uh, to use these brakes, to use these brakes on this car. So PowerStop recommends that you go uh, 30 to 40 miles an hour and do an abrupt stop all the way up to 10 miles an hour and then coast along. You're gonna repeat that process about three to four times, okay? You're gonna smell some smoke and see probably some smoke coming out of the, the, the wheels. That is 100% normal. The reason for this process is that you're heating them up and you're trying to break them in. That's the whole process. Once you do the four crazy stops, you're gonna drive around town for 10, 15 miles uh, and do casual go and stopping uh, braking in other words like just like how you would drive normally throughout the day uh, and that would be it that would be your braking procedure let them cool down and enjoy your brakes I'm gonna tell you this guys it was a night and day difference in stopping it's insane how much firmer my brake pedal was number one and how much quicker uh, I was actually braking and I didn't make any noise my brakes were making squeaky noises and they weren't even that bad that was annoying as all heck but that's pretty much it thank you everybody for enjoying this new episode of PTL's garage and as always here from my family to yours thank you for tuning in and being a part of this awesome channel uh, where as always we're gonna break fix and repeat so deuces everyone